Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Bucket Ponds, and today I'm here with another video. This is an update for my six-month-old sealed Martian biosphere. Now, you could also call this an ecosphere or a self-sustaining sealed ecosystem. This jar uh, represents a lot of work, planning, and theory crafting on my part over the last year uh, before its construction, and uh, tons of enjoyment and fun after I set it up. I've been watching this tank pretty carefully, and as you can see, the uh, alien Martian vibe definitely uh, fits the tank as it has grown into uh, the state it is now. At first glance, it might not have made sense, but I hope that it does now in this video. I will, of course, have a link to the uh, setup video in the description. Okay, now to the uh, surface of the water here, above the surface, we have spike rush, which is one of the plants that I included, growing really well, and uh, stringy green long pieces. We have here spike rush, duckweed, bladderwort, and some other plants mixed together. Uh, not traditional duckweed, this is actually mud midget, which forms like little branches. Uh, but here's the real star of the show. Uh, these are land-dwelling insects that I included during setup. Uh, my plans worked out really well for the tank, and uh, it actually produces enough oxygen to host land-dwelling insects above the water. I've tried to replicate this or to actually create this effect in my other ecospheres without success. But as you may know, I am a slug keeper, and I raise a vast army of springtails and other small land-dwelling insects. Uh, so I did include a few in this tank when I set it up, and they have survived and colonized the surface. It's quite beautiful, and I'm really happy to see them. Now here we have a small piece of plant that was snuck on, uh, stuck onto the glass with a bit of water and condensation from the tank itself. Uh, I didn't expect much here. But as you can see, there's several small creatures. There are water mites, uh, ostracod. Uh, I believe there's some paramecia or something like that in there. And you can see at the bottom here, um, I haven't seen these too much before. I think that's a cyclops, but he's behaving a lot like a tiny isopod. So that's kind of cool. Um, I haven't learned too much about the cyclops, but I am happy to see them when they show up. And I do look forward to learning more about them in the future. Um, I have studied quite a few of these species and uh, I think a lot of planning and, like I said, theory crafting is what has led to the success of this tank. Um, I did plan this out very carefully over a long period of time before I set it up. So uh, even my friends and family probably got sick of me talking about the Martian ecosphere that I would build one day. Well, here it is. Now, just to clarify, this is six months after it was sealed. I don't exchange air or water with the tank. It is living in its own little bubble. As you can see here is another little splotch of water with some ostracods and creatures inside. Again, a big surprise. Uh, here's a few water mites. Uh, I believe this is a pine needle that snuck into the tank. But you can see there, they don't move too awful much, but they're, uh, they're very peaceful and they're actually arachnids. That's right, these are technically spiders living in my ecosphere. And there's probably hundreds, if not a couple thousand of them. It's hard to count these tiny creatures. You can see some other swimming animals nearby. All right, and we have another blotch on the side of the glass, uh, a little piece of plant with some condensation. It basically rains in these sealed tanks, you know, uh, just like a cold glass of water. Condensation forms on the inside of the surface of the glass and uh, slowly trickles down into the water. It's part of like a weather system that exists within the tanks. Uh, and it is sealed, so yeah. Uh, but you can see here's a water mite interacting with a worm, and here's another shot. I'm not sure if that's a larva or a worm or what quite is going on here, uh, but there's definitely something interesting. Uh, this water mite is interacting with this small worm or larva, and that's pretty cool. There's an ostracod moving around in this little tiny bit of water, which it really surprised me to see so much life up here in these little drops of water on the surface. Uh, this is inside the jar on the inner wall, and uh, this water will trickle down into the tank, so these creatures won't be up there forever. But uh, I guess they've migrated up here on purpose. I'm not quite sure. But they're happy and healthy. And apparently you can keep water mites in a single drop of water. And uh, they seem to do just fine. Now I think that my mites eat plants, but I can't be certain. And he seems to be eating something there, so who knows. Now these black dots, you may have seen them in the opening sequence. I'm not sure what they are. I think they're another type of water mite. But they could be related to the plants somehow. Some kind of seed. I'm not really sure, and that's a big part of the fun with these ecospheres is seeing things that you don't yet understand and then running off and learning about them. And 
I have a lot of fun with this stuff, guys, and I hope that you enjoy seeing my videos. Um, this isn't one of my two-year-old ecospheres, but it's one of my best. And I know there's a lot of guys out here on YouTube doing videos like this, or, you know, at least projects like this, I should say. Uh, but I, I believe that my true skill and talent with setting up the sealed ecospheres and biospheres, I believe that that's what sets me apart. They may have more cash and better gear, camera equipment and whatnot, but I've put the time and energy into learning about and uh, mastering the sealed tanks. Now, I won't say that I've made a few that haven't survived, but, you know, I've, I've had 98% success rate with these uh, sealed jar aquariums. Now, here's the surface level. You can see the red clay and some fine sediment on top. There's actually a deceased uh, dragonfly larva in there. He wasn't meant to be in the tank, but they seem to sneak into every one of my projects here at Bucket Ponds. And uh, don't get me wrong, I love dragonflies. I did not mean for him to die. But uh, at least he'll be immortalized here on YouTube. And, you know, his relatives out there in my ponds are doing really well. And I hope that they'll forgive me for, you know, the loss of one of their own. <laughs> but here we have the uh, lower levels. And you can see there is life in here. There are... Uh, Paramecia and Cyclops and things starting around in this algae layer. This is not toxic algae, though it may appear so. Um, this is just stra standard pond lake algae. You'll see it anywhere. Um, I've actually harvested these samples and grown this stuff intentionally for reasons just like this. Uh, the first reason, the first uh, cause of bucket ponds even existing was uh, to collect some stuff to bring home and make ecospheres. Uh, based on the people I saw on YouTube. So here's my ecosphere. This isn't my first, this is probably my 10th ecosphere, and I have plenty more. You'll see a few of them in the background. Uh, here's a nice Cyclops that was just uh, sitting picture perfect on the glass for us. You can see what they look like. He's got a little Y-shaped tail, and he's just a cool little creature. I think they're called copepods, uh, but I'm still learning about a lot of these things, like I said. And here's another just alien scene from that algae layer. And once again, you might think, oh, well, you know, that's some old toxic, dead algae. Nope. There's water mites in there. There's little water mites. And that little white creature up there in the top left, I'm not even sure what he is, but he moves around a little bit. And uh, there's a great shot of the water mites. They seem to have colonized this little hole. And I don't know if they're feeding there or just living there and what's going on. But that's really nifty. And that makes me really happy to see life in these jars. As an ecosphere creator, you will find yourself wondering, like, oh, is anything going to show up? You know, is everything in there dead? Did I fail? And I thought that within a few weeks of setting this up. But six months later, creatures have emerged, the algae has taken over, and my predictions for this tank came true. Uh, there's a lot of photosynthesis in here, and it's just a, a wonderful project. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Uh, now, as you can see, there is a lot of algae. And during setup, I actually predicted that uh, after going through Diana Wallstad's book, uh, Ecology of the Planet Aquarium, where she mentions red clay as causing algae explosions. And uh, to her credit, she was right. The red clay that I included has created a huge explosion, and it's exactly what we wanted. So thank you, Diana Wallstad, for your cool book. Um, thank you for all my friends and viewers on here. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please throw a like on it. And just a reminder, this is a six-month-old sealed aquarium with plenty of other projects nearby. You'll see all of those on my YouTube channel and more. My name's Bucket Ponds. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, hit me up later. Check my channel out.